Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk Sergei Kovalev, his victory over Jean Pascal. Let me just point out that I have a problem with the end of this fight. Right now, let's just understand that there's a built-in bias while you're watching the telecast. Right? They're telling you who's winning the rounds. But understand, this isn't a football game where we're going to add up the score at the end of the fight. Right? Because in boxing, there's another way to win a fight. Right? You can actually do so by stoppage. If there's a stoppage, just understand the scoring before the stoppage doesn't matter. Other sports are not like this. Right? Usain Bolt can't run 30 meters and then be declared the winner by stoppage. He can in boxing. And let's be blunt here, sometimes that's the strategy. Especially when you're facing a guy who has only gone past the eighth round once in his career. Right now, I said before this fight, and the gamblers were taken care of. I predicted a KO, and this fight ended by KO in round eight. Didn't matter who got it. Right? So you're taken care of. But in this fight, in my pre-fight video, I talked about how, in my opinion, Jean Pascal was one of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing. All of us knew Sergei Kovalev was, but Jean Pascal was as well. Now, as you watch this fight on HBO, and I don't mean to pick on HBO, I thought they did a great job. I thought Max Kellerman was on it. I thought Bernard Hopkins was stellar, right? But on HBO, they tell you who's winning rounds. On my scorecard, I can tell you I had Kovalev comfortably ahead. I only gave Pascal one round. But this fight was so competitive that when you look at the power punch stats, you're going to find that Kovalev landed 61 power shots, Pascal landed 54. There are moments in this fight where Pascal gets off huge punches, right? Huge punches. In fact, let me look through my notes, right? Pascal gets off two huge right hands in round four. Huge! That would have stopped most opponents had Kovalev not had a chin on him. Pascal would be the story. So let's revisit the eighth round. Okay, I understand many people are going to feel differently. Right? I view this fight like I view Nigel Ben Gerald McClellan. Let's go to the eighth round. You're going to see that Pascal's hit should have been called a knockdown. The ropes keep him up. You're going to notice that Kovalev hits the canvas, right? He slips. Doesn't look like he's hit with the punch. Looks like he slips, right? Then, of course, after that, Kovalev gets off the canvas, is looking at his corner. They're talking to him. Very important, right? Kovalev then looks over at Pascal and nods his head. His corner clearly is telling him, Pascal's gone. He's out. Now, that's important because the referee may have heard it, right? Keep in mind, boxing's a live event situation. So you got one corner saying, Pascal's gone. The ref might have realized that he blew the knockdown. Doesn't give Pascal a count, right? Pascal's back hits the ropes. Right? The ropes save him from getting knocked down. The ref doesn't give him a standing eight. So then Kovalev comes forward, lands some wicked punches. Here's what I want you to consider. He lands a shot 
It's brutal. Hard right hand. You see Pascal get hit. It's clear. Pascal is dazed. May have even blacked out momentarily. And I mean a short moment. So he's hit. He starts to lean forward. Looks like he's going down. Then he's hit again. But understand what happens next. Pascal starts to come back up. Right? He's leaning back. Right? Now keep in mind, this is a fight where you have two heavy-handed guys and Pascal himself has landed some home run punches. Pascal's not on his way to the canvas, folks, when this fight is stopped. The referee may have seen him lean forward, but if the referee tried to jump in at that point, he should have waited to see what would have happened next after Pascal leaned backwards. Understand, Pascal had been in the corner at different times throughout this fight. Now, in a fight where, forget the other CompuBox numbers, right? Let's assume Pascal's game is to take this fight into the late rounds, right? Take Kovalev into the deep end of the pool. With punching power, Kovalev didn't face against Bernard Hopkins, right? If Pascal lands the punches late in this fight that he landed in round four, who knows if Kovalev's still standing? Understand, too, you take away the two power punches Kovalev lands at the end of the fight when the ref steps in and stops the fight. And keep in mind, Pascal looks upset immediately. He knows where he is. You take away those two power punches, and the power punch differential would have been Kovalev 59 power punches, Pascal 54. He's very much in this fight, folks. He doesn't have to be in the fight on the judges' scorecards. If he's a power puncher and he still has his power, he's still throwing big shots. If the referee has any uncertainty whatsoever as to why Kovalev was on the canvas moments earlier, if the ref isn't 100% certain, that some punch Pascal threw had something to do with Kovalev being on the canvas, then this fight shouldn't have been stopped. Let me say this. Understand, Pascal has Kovalev timed to the point where he's landing more than 40% of his power punches. Yes, he's losing the rounds. He's landing his power punches. Folks, this is a war of attrition. Sometimes the sport of boxing comes down to exactly that. Now, I'm not here to say Pascal was ahead on the scorecards. Far from it. But he's very much in the fight in the eighth round with four more rounds to go. Right? And, of course, he landed huge shots in round four. This is a fight people have to see. We're going to disagree on this one, many of us. I thought the stoppage was premature. I'm sure the ref had the best of intentions. I'll agree. When Pascal first gets hit and leans forward, I thought he was about to hit the canvas. But when a guy then leans backwards, it's in a fight where he's landing more than 40% of his power shots, and he's within seven power shots of his opponent, I think the fight shouldn't have been stopped. Now let's talk about the fight because Pascal's strategy is breathtaking. Now as I said, I don't believe Pascal was here to win a decision. He's trying to get a stoppage. Understand, Kovalev has been down in multiple fights. Right? Multiple fights. So let me say this. Let's talk about Pascal's style, and it's strategy, folks. He's throwing one punch at a time. Let me tell you, that's brilliant, right? Because you're fighting a power puncher with volume. You yourself don't want to leave yourself too open to counters. 
Now, Pascal, curiously enough, and I've never seen this before, against Kovalev, drops his hands, right? His defense is vertical. He's really relying on seeing Kovalev's punches and then ducking out of the way. Understand, that would make his own counters faster, right? Because if he has hands up like this, then he has to unwind his defense to get off a counter. But if he's cocked already, and he's just dodging the punches, and it's high risk, right? Then the idea is that he's cocked already. He doesn't have to untangle himself from a defensive stance, right? So Pascal is low volume, right? He has a relatively wide open stance. He doesn't have his hands up like this. We don't see his forearms by his face. He has his hands down. Understand the only way you can get away with this is if you're a power puncher. In other words, Kovalev understands he can't bum rush Pascal. He has to respect Pascal's power. Right, and Pascal is literally going vertical. In other words, he's bending. His center of gravity keeps changing. Kovalev is standing up. His center of gravity is pretty constant. Pascal is bending all over the ring early. Right, his upper body is his defense. Now let's talk about let's talk about Kovalev. Right? Kovalev looked good. I'm telling you, in the sixth round of this fight, this will, found, this will sound ridiculous, but Kovalev flashes an above-average jab. You actually see the influence of Don Turner in his corner. That black man with the gray goatee behind Kovalev while he's giving the interview to Max Kellerman, that guy actually used to be in Evander Holyfield's corner. Right? That guy has been around. That guy's one of the best teachers of jabs in the sport of boxing, and you saw that here. There are moments in this fight, Kovalev is becoming colorful as his career goes along. There are moments in this fight where Kovalev does a Ray Leonard. Multiple moments where he's waving his right hand as if he's going to throw it, then he's popping a stiff jab. A stiff jab on Jean Pascal. In fact, I thought it was his rediscovery of the jab because he gets away from it. The fourth round's kind of crazy, right? He gets away from the jab for a bit. But I thought it's his rediscovery of the jab in the sixth round that changes the fight, right? Because Pascal seems to have a defensive hole in his game. You notice it early in the fight. As Pascal dodges punches, as he backs away, he's naked. So as he backs away, he gets hit with bombs, right? So then Kovalev starts tying him up. In other words, as Pascal's backing away naked, rather than come in with power shots, Kovalev starts shooting a jab, right? To me, it swings momentum back in his favor, right? It kind of keeps Pascal off of him. Let me say this, too. The third round, right? You know, the fight should have ended in the third round. Pascal gets hit, folks. He gets brutally hit. When he's knocked down, this is the official knockdown in the fight, right? He's actually up on the ropes. He's hit. He leans over the ropes. He's out of it. He barely makes it back to his corner. You want to know how out of it Jean Pascal is? He gets hit. He's between the ropes. We all know it's a knockdown, right? The ropes clearly held him up. When he comes back in the ring, I encourage you, when this fight gets posted on YouTube, to look at the next three seconds. You're going to notice that Jean Pascal couldn't even stand up straight. I'm not kidding. He actually is 
so confused and unbalanced that he tries to convince the ref that he could continue. Folks, he staggers a bit. He gets his head back in, and then he tries to take a step to the side, and he staggers. His balance is off. Had the ref stopped the fight right there, the stoppage would have been more satisfactory. Right? The ref didn't. The only reason Pascal doesn't get stopped in the third round is because the bell rings right after that. Right, so then we get the fourth round, and the world is different. Right, Pascal literally lands some big right hands. Right, Kovalev himself is lucky he has a chin. He easily could have been stopped in the fourth round. In my opinion, a referee watching the fourth round should not have then stopped the fight in the eighth round. Because you would have realized that both guys were getting hit with big shots. You also should have realized that Pascal, who looks terrible at the beginning of the fourth round, so bad that I thought he should have taken a knee. Right? He looks bad at the, at the beginning of the fourth round. You also realize that Pascal is the kind of guy who can come back from adversity. Folks, he's brutally knocked down in the third round. He has a problem with his balance. The fourth round starts. He's getting cuffed around. You wonder how the fight's going to, you know, continue past that round. Then he throws two blistering right hands from the corner. Once you saw that sequence, people should have realized, look, either guy can get a knockdown in this fight. The scorecard can be lopsided. Either guy has a chance to win in this fight. Well, let me tell you, after Kovalev rediscovers the jab in the sixth round, and it's a good sequence, right? Because he's pumping the jab, he waves a hand, he's getting the jab between Pascal's guard. Pascal is concerned about Kovalev's hooks, right? Kovalev starts the fight by landing a right hand repeatedly to the side of Pascal's head. So Pascal leaves himself open right up the middle. Kovalev starts making him pay. So then we get to the seventh round, and this is one of those moments that I feel fans often overlook. That Vladimir Klitschko move, where you lean on the back of a guy's neck, is lethal when your opponent is drained, like Pascal was drained. Right? This is Pascal post knockdown. Right? Kovalev literally leans on the back of his neck. I'm telling you, Pascal looks spent. He looks spent. So then we get to the eighth round, and of course, Pascal is there. He gets knocked down, but it's not called. The ropes hold him up. Then he's in the corner. Understand, he's been getting hit hard at times in the fight. But understand the punishment is literally two-way. In other words, he is landing power shots of his own. So let me leave you with this. Pascal, was he hurt in the eighth round? Absolutely. Right? Was he hurt earlier in the fight? Yes. Did he come back earlier in the fight? Yes. Was his strategy to take this fight into the later rounds and to land power shots. I believe it was. I think Pascal from the opening bell is going for a KO on Kovalev. Right? Let's just say I haven't seen Kovalev hit as hard ever as he was hit in the fourth round of this fight. Right? As I said before, Pascal lands 41% of his power punches. Think about this. I know Kovalev throws many more punches. Pascal lands a healthy 34% of his power punches. If Pascal is out of it, and we know he's hit with hard shots throughout this fight, right? If he does, you know, put it this way, if he's completely disoriented, how's he landing 34% of his punches? Understand, Kovalev, by contrast, only lands 26% of his punches. 
right? So I congratulate Sergei Kovalev. I did have him winning most of the rounds in the fight. But I feel the referee deprived us of what would have been an intriguing finish to the eighth round. Maybe Pascal doesn't make it out of the eighth round. But more importantly, this referee may have deprived us of an intriguing ninth, tenth, eleventh, and possibly twelfth round. Right? Understand, as dominant as Kovalev looks, this is only, in fact, this didn't even go past the eighth round. He still has only gone by the eighth round once. He's never been by the eighth round with a power puncher like this. Right? When you saw Pascal hit Kovalev in the fourth round live, didn't you think there was a chance Kovalev was going to hit the canvas? Aren't there several times in this fight where Kovalev gets stood up by Pascal power punches? Understand, Pascal is leading with power punches. He's not throwing the jab that often. Right? I thought it was a great fight. Yes, Pascal gets battered at times in the fight. But I thought the stoppage was premature. If Pascal's out on his feet, then how is he raising his head back at the very time the referee stops the contest? Right? How? Right? And... Let's just ask ourselves, if Pascal came back from the knockdown in the third round where he's between the ropes and then when he gets himself back in the ring, he's staggering. If he came back from that, how do we know he wouldn't have come back from what was happening in the eighth round? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me add this about a different fight. And I haven't seen the whole fight yet. But I started to watch the Glasgow-Steve Cunningham fight. Right? Now, I privately thought, in fact, I believe I have a pre-fight video up here on YouTube. I privately thought Cunningham would be too fast for him. So, of course, and I know Cunningham was the underdog. Right? So the first three rounds happened. And I thought Cunningham was cruising. Right? I gave Cunningham the first three rounds of that fight. Now, I thought Cunningham was in such control that I actually left. I didn't see the rest of the fight because I knew I was going to be seeing this Pascal Kovalev fight and I needed a break. Right? So I actually left. I saw the masterpiece Ike Chalemba threw before that. Right? So I actually left. I thought, okay, well, the only question I had in my mind, given the boxing gap between Glasgow and Cunningham, was whether Cunningham's chin would hold up for all 12 rounds. Right? You know the rest. I check in on the fight, and HBO has Cunningham ahead. Right? Now, I admit, I want to rely on my eyes, not anything else. Right? So, HBO had Cunningham ahead. I said, okay, well, you know, Steve must be in control. The little snippet I saw, Steve's in control. To those of you who saw the whole fight, and I haven't seen the whole fight yet. Tell me who you thought won the fight. Because I heard the score, unanimous decision. I thought, oh, Cunningham must have won. Then I heard Glasgow won. I was like, what? Unanimous decision? <laughs> In a fight where Cunningham didn't even hit the canvas? If you scored the fight for Glasgow, tell us the rounds he won. Tell me if I'm full of hot air in believing Cunningham wins the first three rounds of the fight. I caught the end of the telecast on HBO, and they were saying, okay, well, Glasgow looked good late. right? How good could he? Are there any 10-8 rounds in this fight? How good could Glasgow have looked late to actually win the fight by this margin on the judges' scorecards? In your opinion, and let's talk to each other, right? Viewers should be able to interface with each other. Was this fight on the up and up? Right? Because there's some dynamic out there where Steve Cunningham never gets the decision in close fights. And there's some dynamic out there where Glasgow seems to get something in every close fight. Right? How did Glasgow get the draw against Malik Scott? I'm still scratching my head on that. 
So the YouTube Nation, you saw the Glasgow fight more than I did, right? I only saw the first three rounds, a little glimpse of the middle of it, and then the end of the fight. I'm guessing Kellerman and Jim Lampley weren't completely delusional as they scored the fight. Tell us how you scored the fight, right? Did Glasgow really beat Steve Cunningham? When they read the scores, <laughs> when you heard it was a unanimous decision, was your first thought, oh, okay, they saw it the way I did, Glasgow won this fight by unanimous decision. Or did you think, oh, right, Steve Cunningham. By the way, I was on Twitter, and I noticed that a mere hardcore Manzur, who lost to Cunningham, and Eddie Chambers, who's from Philly with Cunningham, could not understand or believe that Steve Cunningham did not win this fight, right? They thought the scoring was crazy, right? On Twitter, some people were using words like robbery, right? Which words would you use in describing that fight? I hope you leave it for us here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.